Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I am so excited about today. I have the legend, John, John Jolif, also known as, <laughs> we were just talking about this a minute ago. John is a legendary therapist. Let me give you another story. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you another therapy story, probably about two minutes. A lady, it's not always ladies, a lady calls me from Germany. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in six states and eight foreign countries every week by cell phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lady calls me from Germany. She says, I have a terrifying fear of spiders and bugs. Mm -hmm. And I'm de debilitated. I hear her husband in the back saying, you've got to help her. She can't function. Yeah. I said, well, I, I think I can help you. She goes, well, good. We'll be over. I go, over? No, 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 no. You don't have to come from Germany to Newport <laughs> Beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can do this over the phone. Do this over the phone. <laughs> yeah. It's an information transfer. We don't need you. In <laughs> right. Yeah. They come over. Yeah. So they stay at the Balboa Bay Club. And the next morning, they come and see me. And she said, her husband says, she did it again. There was a spider in the sink, and she had to kill it before she came to bed with me. Mm -hmm. She's terrified of spiders and bugs. I said, okay, tell me about your family of origin, mm -hmm. birthplace of attitudes and expectations, okay? She said, well, my mother and father were married, so we had an intact family. Mm -hmm. My sister was four years older than I. Mm -hmm. We shared a bedroom, but not a bed. Mm -hmm. And many times she'd go out in the night and go in the garden, get spiders and bugs, and lay them in my bed. So when I woke up in the morning, there they were. Yeah. And so I said, because I'm a student, right? I'm being a therapist, not a mm -hmm. counselor. I said, oh, so you don't have a problem with spiders and bugs. You have a problem with your sister. <laughs> Why is she doing this kind of thing? You right. probably couldn't trust her around boyfriends or sharp objects. Right, or, right. What is wrong with your sister? I said, hey, here's a potential healing question. Tonight when you go to bed with your husband, ask yourself this question. Can I tell the difference between my husband and my sister? I knew you were going there. And if you had yeah. two sisters, yeah. could you tell the difference between the one this who one, does this yeah. and the one who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. Your basic problem is differentiation. Right. You're generalizing. You're not differentiating between customers, clients, mm -hmm. partners, people. Right. And that's what you need. How do you okay, now? So that's about two minutes, right? But that's and now the, I'm feeling for forty eight. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of car do you drive? Now, Where, have you ever been to, to Hawaii? Uh, yes. While you're here, make sure you go to the yeah. Coco's over it. Uh, so, so there is that transfer uh, of knowledge, no doubt. Yeah. And and I am a maybe it's because John just the way you know you know about my background and the way you know where I was raised and some of the crazy people that I ran with. Um, I learned for me yeah. that there was information that was coming in, but the processor, the beliefs, the attitudes, the yeah. story I told myself, the processor could hear the information, but if it wasn't aligned with the current processor, it didn't get in. It was like mm -hmm. I was running Microsoft DOS, you with me, or so Windows yeah. 94, yeah. and there was an upgrade, but the upgrade was just not penetrating. How do we help the person who has that, that processor? Because it shows up, for some of my clients, like, I know I should go to the gym. I know I should make my phone calls. I know, like, I know it, but something about the processor's off. And that's why we need to talk. That's why we need to talk. Mm -hmm. You need to tell me what you think. I love your question. Mm -hmm. What do you think the issue is? If, you, if yeah. you're really honest yeah. with yourself, mm -hmm. what do you think it is? Um, I and think, they're going to take you in, yeah, in directions right. that you would never think to go. I've heard it all. Maybe not all, but I've heard a lot. I've heard my brother beat me with a phone. That's why I can't make phone calls. Mm -hmm. I was like, how old were you? Because mm -hmm. the guy was like 55 when I was having the conversation with him. And I was like, tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, he just, you remember the old phone with the wire and he would swing it around and smack yeah. me. And then I'm like, and he got really descriptive when his, he was four and his brother was like six. Yeah. And I was like, that's why you don't make phone calls. <laughs> like, like I didn't know, I didn't know where to go with that, but you know, you I would love, I'd love to have somebody call us oh my God, with one play. of those. Okay. Who's issues. out there that is afraid of making phone calls? It we want to his, talk to you. had his brother or her sister. Or yes. So we let's, let's just see who is out there. Are we able to ask questions? So Connor, yes, you're able to ask questions and you're able to come live. I'm just looking really faster because we got a lot of, things lining up here. Let's just see if we can find somebody, John, just for fun. Uh, I'm gonna go to, I think that's the most recent one. Let's see. 
And yes, you're still able to ask questions. You could even type it, Connor, in here, and I could ask the question of John. Yeah. But we got somebody here who has their screen up. They just turned it on. <laughs> but the camera is not on themselves. Yes, we are doing a live show. Uh, so whoever you are out there, I'm going to try and kill that. The oh, I just killed the entire show if I did that. So nope. All right. Well, we'll just keep jamming. So so John, okay. Let's, so let uh, me, there's let a time me, in my life when I was afraid okay. to make phone calls. Yeah. Talk to me. Uh, well, it. So again. It's always appealing the onion. Yeah. It's never what it seems to be. Right. It's always underneath. Mm -hmm. It's the story behind the story. The story. Yeah. It's the dynamics, not the story. I'm going to tell you, you have never, ever been afraid of making phone calls. That's the truth. Yeah. Now, this other story you're telling yourself is not. Okay. The truth is you've never been afraid of making phone calls. Mm -hmm. The No, no. The the myth is yeah. you've been afraid of making phone calls. The truth is you're afraid of making phone calls that other people answer. Okay. You're not afraid of making calls. You're afraid that people will answer the calls. Sure. And then when, what's going to happen when they answer the call? They're going to ask questions. They're going to have problems. They're going to be challenged by certain things. That you're going to be inadequate to answer. It's going to overwhelm you. You're going to embarrass yourself on the phone call and so, rather than admit that you're just not confident to make the to, to mm -hmm. have the call made and have this interaction, yeah. Rather than really identify that, you lay it on. I, I'm afraid of making calls. So that's a lot to unpack for people. But see, so where do they go from there? Like, okay, so it's so it's not, it's not this. It's that. That's that. But if I'm afraid of of the rejection or the loss or there the not go. looking good or yeah. what are people going to say about me? They're going to be afraid that I'm groveling for business and mm -hmm. or they're going to think I don't have any money. So I would say I'm, to them, right? They have all these like stories. I would say to them, give me a question yeah. you're afraid to have asked. Give me a question you would be afraid that if you made the phone call, they might ask you that you don't know. There, okay, so that's a whole other one, which is how's the market, right? And uh, and what's going to happen to the future of real estate, right? This is a question that it's on okay, a lot me, of consumers' minds right now. And, the then, and then maybe yeah. the, the agent's like, "Well, I don't, well, I don't even know." Okay, how let I'd me get that. let me get to the dynamic of that mm -hmm. thing I'm talking yeah. about. And I got questions here. There too. is a myth. There is a myth that some people have more confidence than other people, whether it's phone calls, right. personal appearance, listings, whatever it is. Right. Some people think that other people have more self-confidence and they just wish they had the self-confidence that they see in other people. Yeah. That's a myth. All people has, have as much self-confidence as everybody else. That's the truth. The truth is everybody has as much confidence as everybody else. Mm -hmm. There's two types. There's negative self-confidence and positive self-confidence. The negative self-confidence is I'm afraid to make the phone call, I'm afraid to ask her out for a, a date, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. They're very confident that it's not going to work out. Or they have positive yeah. self-confidence yeah. and say, well, why not? It's a numbers game. I'll make a call. It right. may work. It may not be. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. They're confident either way. Everybody has as much self-confidence as everybody else. So the question is, where does your negative self-confidence come from? You're so confident mm -hmm. that it's not going to work. It's right. broken. It won't fly. Know? Yeah. And that has to do with a reference point. Reference points are the things that help us explain why things don't work. We have a reference point. Yeah. And I'll get into that in just a moment. I think we've got a call. But I'll get into the reference points that can be problematic. So there's two questions, Brian, that are actually in the, if you look at the question mark. Mm -hmm. Give us one. Actually, just hand me the phone and I'll just, I'm going to go that way. It's flipped around. Are we Perfect. able to bill your staff? They're taking notes. They there, and I, <laughs> of course they are. I'm okay, so listen to these. Listen to these two questions. So, um, so one person asked, and I, I don't know how to say this person's name. It looks like Biatrazoko. Why in most marriages people lose spark and don't want to have sex? Can can we can't, I, talk I don't to know him? If we can, I don't know if we can get her. It's uh, it's 
she was there and she just she gave us the sort of written question. Yeah, it, it so doesn't why, help. It doesn't help because because she has the answer. She, so yeah. what's the question again? The question is, why is it uh, in most marriages people lose the spark and then don't want to have sex? And so I would never answer that question. Right. I would say to her, when did you lose the spark? Yeah. Why do you think you lost the spark? Right. And you know what she's going to tell me? She's going to say two things. Mm -hmm. First thing she's going to say is, I don't know. Yeah. And in my that's, radio that's show, safe, I never let answer. people say that. Yeah. You, you do know. Yeah. Give me your suspicion. Right. Make it up. Give me a hallucination. Give me, give me yeah. something. Okay? She knows what happened with that spark in her. Yeah. And that's the story I want to hear. Right. Because then we can help her find it or make a decision about it. Mm -hmm. Are you going to live without a spark? Is it him? Is it you? Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a personal it's all, question. It's, it's the what's the story in your head, right? I see. I jokingly say like I, I try and make people yeah. laugh, as you know, like when you're doing yeah. an event, like you're speaking for six hours. I don't tomorrow. think They'll you be, try. They, they just I know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get they it. Laugh. Like, yeah. I mean, okay. I have my little comedic moments, <laughs> but I would say to people, uh, you know, like right now, this is the time of the year. Everyone's working on, you know. A, personal professional development what are my goals for 2022 right. business life right. relationships right. and i and i'll jokingly say you know how many of you are just having a lot of hallway sex right now and the audience will kind of look at me and i'll go you know you walk past each other and go screw you in the hallway like that's all you got what are you going to do about that like that's always one of the questions i have for people and that's that's kind of what i hear mm -hmm. her asking mm -hmm. so so you got to unpack where did the origin of the spark begin right or the lack of the spark begin yeah. is that the answer but what do you do when you discover it Wait, you say, oh my God, like she did this, well, I did that, and there was the, a moment and we both felt weird and it was awkward. And, uh, but right? there's a history to that. And that's why we can only speculate, but she knows. Yeah, she knows. She knows. Yeah. We're speculating. Yeah. Let me tell you another story. Yeah. Okay. So in my first career, I was a tour guide for the National Geographic Society. Mm -hmm. And so I traveled. You guys couldn't imagine that, could you? What was that? <laughs> I said they couldn't imagine that you were a tour <laughs> yeah, guide yeah. for the National yeah. Geographic Society. Yes. So I so I traveled, you know, three hundred days a year. We went in some very dicey places. One time we were in West Indian Jaya, up with Papua New Guinea. We were mm -hmm. studying cannibals. Okay, and uh, whenever I would go to a village or wherever I would stay, I would. I wasn't a cameraman. I was set up base camp. I'd get the camels. I'd get mm -hmm. the helicopters, mm -hmm. the canoes, whatever mm -hmm. it was, set up tents. And so then I would have to wait for them to get the picture of the bird. And sometimes it would be a month. Yeah. So I'm living in this, this place. And so I always said to the, my native speaker, I want to help. I want to hunt. I want to vet. I want to cut wood. I want to do something. Just put me to work. Yeah. Right? And uh, this one time in Western Jaya, I waited for about a week or two. And finally, one day, the chief of the village came along with my native speaker. And they asked me to come out of my little hut. And they said, I want you to point the way to the future. I want, to, I want you to point, point to the way, the way to, the to the future. So yeah. I went there. Yeah. And they said, point to the way to the past. I went there. Mm -hmm. And they mumbled in their native language, walked off. I never saw the chief again, and I never was asked to help. So about two days later, my native speaker comes back and says, I, I said, I felt like there was a test, and I don't think I passed. He said, yeah, you didn't pass. Mm -hmm. I said, what's so complicated about pointing that way for the future in front of me and behind me for the past? He says, indigenous people, at least the, the West Indian giants, we can see the past through our music, and our dance, mm -hmm. and our art. Mm -hmm. So our past is right in front of us. Directly in front. But the future we can't see, so it's behind us. And the chief thought, if you don't know your directions, how could you be helpful? Interesting. And I think he was right. Right. And so what that taught me back in 1970, what that taught me is that my Western education may have been faulty, is that I had a great deal of confidence about everything. Mm-hmm. Because they teach you to be confident. Mm -hmm. Pass the tests and you're confident. Right. You graduate Get the and grade. you're confident. Yeah. And I was very confident, but I was confidently wrong. And so when somebody says something to me, whether it's about sparks or it's about one thing or the other, I always think that I don't know yet. 
what the issue is. I've even developed the, the comment that if you answer a question, you don't understand the question. I never answer first questions. Mm-hmm. So when someone says to me, uh, did you go to Stanford or Harvard? Mm-hmm. I am never going to answer that question. Yeah. Because I know there's a question behind that. Right. They don't have enough tra- confidence yeah. what are you to really ask. Trying to ask. Yeah. 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 So I reframe the questions that I'm not comfortable mm-hmm. asking. And I said, I think what you're asking me is, am I professionally trained and competent to help the people you refer to me? Mm-hmm. And they look at me and go, yeah, didn't I just ask you that? <laughs> but had I answered the first question, yeah. no, yeah. Yeah. then I'm really answering the second question. I'm not very competent. Yeah. But isn't even that like- um, So you have to understand that you got to be, you yeah. got to go slow enough, yeah. be a student enough. Yeah. I love, uh, I love asking- um, like, t- tell me why, like, why, why are you, like, I just help me understand, like, mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. what are you really trying to ask? It just depends upon my level of rapport with the individual, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm a little more direct. Like, I don't want to make that. I, I almost felt like it might've been an assumption. Mm-hmm. Are you asking because you're, you know, you're fearful mm-hmm. that I might not have the qualifications mm-hmm. that I, what if they were just like, no, I just, I love Stanford grants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like there, you, there's just so many yeah. variables. Well, Yeah. Yeah, you can you can have a long conversation with a why. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why this is it gets back to my yeah. point. I think I was making. Did I make it earlier? Were we off air when I made it? You were saying let's just do some Q and I today. Oh yeah. no, Q and A. Q and A. Let's do some Q and A. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said, I don't do Q and A. Yeah. Yeah. He said what? I said because I don't believe in answers. <clears throat> I don't believe in answers, and I don't believe in solutions. That's got to be hard for some people to hear right now. He also doesn't believe in love, but that's I'm, I was oh, saving yeah. that one for later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start right. first with Q oh, and I. Oh, I believe in love, but not as you know, not for, you know. yes. But yes. okay, so <laughs> so, and we'll come right back from the break, and we'll discuss more <laughs> why John doesn't believe in love. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a little yes. <laughs> so so, uh, an answer. If you really think about it, an yeah. answer yeah. is is complete understanding. Mm-hmm. And yeah. who's so arrogant to think they completely understand anything? Yeah, yes. That's what an answer is. Yes. A solution is a cousin to an answer. Mm-hmm. And if you have an answer and a solution, why do we need to collaborate? Yeah, yeah. See? So, John, but I do, it's interesting because, you know, I thought about this conversation we had, and I probably answered six or 7,000 questions, um, you know, online and like Instagram. Like, hey, yeah. got a question. I'm on an airplane. Yeah. You, you know me. I yeah. just want to help. Like I want yeah. to contribute. Yeah. Now the questions that I'm getting are they're really for everybody listening. They're really the same seven or eight questions, just in different variations, different yeah. parts of the country, different parts of the world. But right. you know, how do I make more phone calls? How do I get more listings? How do I take my business from thirty to three hundred transactions a year? They're they're they're. I don't want to call it mechanical in nature, but I think most of the time, most of the time, they're just looking for validation of what they already know they should do. So am I wrong in answering those questions? Yeah, but the validation, when it comes from somebody else, is not going to be that helpful. Okay. So I did. I do group therapy, and one of my stories is that, do you know why men like younger women? It's because their stories are shorter. And I, I'm an old man, and I've got a lot of stories, <laughs> oh, so I'm going to be telling stories all the time. <laughs> but I'm So bumped. I have a story. <laughs> yes, yes. I have a story in group therapy. Yeah. There, I put this woman in the center. Yeah. And I put a trash can, a metal trash can between her legs. Mm-hmm. And I laid on the ground and I had everybody in the group come and give her an affirmation in the ear, whisper a affirmation, a mm-hmm. compliment, yeah. an encouragement. Yeah. And every time they did it, I <clears> hit the trash can. Yeah. Created like an anchor. I hit the trash can. So let mm-hmm. me come up. Yeah. Yeah. And she says, what are you doing down there? Mm -hmm. I said, well, everybody's giving you these wonderful affirmations and it's falling right out of your ass. And I'm catching it. Yes. And so what you really need is a cork. Yeah. Because every day for so many of Mm -hmm. us, every day is a new day. There's no residual memory from yesterday. It's accomplishment. We overcame something. But we need to be affirmed 
all the time from other people. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stick. So there's no- Is that like back to the processor? Well, yes, it is. That's right. So let me, another story, sorry. So there's an old uh, question. I don't know if it's a Buddhist question or like, you've heard it many times. If there's a tree that falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Mm -hmm. Of course it does. The life's animated. It goes on without us. Right. But the better question is, if you accomplish something of value and worth and there's no other voice than yours to affirm you, is that enough? Yeah. And the answer is, it must be. It has to be. So when we go out to get affirmations and compliments from other people, they don't stick like the ones, we know the truth. Right. We know how hard something was or how easy it was. Mm -hmm. Why are we exporting that to somebody else? That just makes me want to go in like five different directions. Um, Like that that was a moment for me, just just hearing you say that because- so often we look for external validation of ideas, principles, actions, results. You know, am I successful? Am I winning? You know, is the car fast enough? Am I healthy enough? On and on and on. And I think everyone listening can can relate to that. We all can. Um, how do you how do you move from the external to the internal? Get a cork. Well, I I get, get a it. Cork. Like a wine cork, However a really that big is. cork. Where am Depends I putting it? Depends on how big ear? it is. <laughs> you know, like how big a hole. In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you but you got to retain this. Yeah. It's what you think, not what the world thinks. Yeah. You know how yeah. easy or difficult things are. Let's go back to reference points. Because mm-hmm. this is that process. Yeah. And whether it comes from the family of origin or it comes from certain life experiences mm-hmm. where we maybe we didn't do our best or we failed, it becomes a reference point. Yeah. And these reference points give us negative self confidence. Mm-hmm. They inhibit us, they restrain us. Uh, And so reference points, you might have been divorced or maybe you were molested or maybe you were abused or maybe you were neglected or maybe you were maybe or or maybe you were maybe. Okay. If you don't heal that, if you don't talk that through, if you don't understand the significance of that, then that will become a reference point that you will filter everything through. For instance… A lot of things happen to us when we're little, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we don't have enough life experience or wisdom to properly conclude, but conclude we do anyway. Mm -hmm. And those conclusions, when they're false, those false conclusions live in our life as confusion. And so we become now adults who are confused about a number of things. And it's tied to the the conclusion, the false conclusion. So what I say now is with your life experience and your wisdom, let's go back and reconclude. Let's go reconclude yeah. that false close, conclusion. Let's close the loop on these things. Cl- close the loop. True or false. Okay. Worked or didn't. So I want to tell you a story. Am, am I making it that simple? Say that again? Am I, am I making it that simple? Is it just, was that true? Close, or, close you, the loop. You know, did this actually happen? Did it not? I called my mom. Get this. I I, I was driving through the Orange Circle. Yeah, had dropped my son off at Chapman University. Yeah, heading down whatever that Glacelle Street, yep. whatever it is, and yep. going through the circle. And I said to my wife, "I said my mom used to live above Felix's restaurant." She's like, "Yeah, you told me that story before." And I'm like, "We should call her really fast." I call my mom and I'm like, "Hey, mom, I'm like, I'm right above your apartment." She goes, "What are you talking about?" I go, at "Felix's restaurant, like in the Orange Circle, like right above it." She goes, "Tom, I live four blocks from there." I was like. <laughs> Mom, I have walked around <laughs> for 40 plus years yeah. believing that you lived. She's like, uh-huh. I don't even know if there is an apartment up there. But it, like, that's a simple, that's a story funny, we told ourselves. metaphorical story. Not metaphor, it's happened. But um, but we have these other stories mm-hmm. that, you know, my, my parents felt this way or I was never enough. Like you hear all the, the I don't want to say it, it's cliche because it's real for people. I'm not smart enough. Well, you I'm hear, you hear enough. So, these so somebody said to, to me the other day, true or false? somebody said to me the other day, I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. I said, you're aware that's an incomplete sentence. Yeah. <laughs> At what? <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm not good enough to boil water. Right. I'm not good, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm not good enough to get my brother to school when they assign me to take him to school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things you're inadequate. There's a lot of things you're not good enough. Yeah. Because it's not your job. Right. Right. 
And Anything you know, we're doing that isn't our job, we're going to be inadequate. We take on too much. But that's back in that yeah. history, yeah. right? I remember uh, years ago, my older brother and I, we would be out traveling, doing events. And like one of the things we loved to ask was just, you're sitting with a bunch of people and you're like, tell me one thing in your life that you believe to be true. But if it wasn't, you would be an entirely different person. Just to watch how, you know, oh, I guess, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah. And just to watch people process. And you know, you'd ask it a bunch of different uh -huh, ways, like, uh -huh. or what's that one thing you're holding on to uh -huh. as true or real that if you just took it off like a jacket, you might be freer to go do something else. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's the question. If you couldn't fail, mm -hmm. what would right. you try to accomplish? Right. Right. But that's a reference. But what you're talking right. about mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. conclusion. Yeah is a confusion and it was reached very early on so we have to go back and kind of re right. reconclude let yeah. me let me Unpack give you it. let me give you an example and this is from my life and you may know this about me or not i don't know i tell the story not because i'm in pain i tell the story as an illustration mm -hmm. so i was orphaned as a child mm -hmm. i grew up in an orphanage i then uh, was taken out three different times had my name changed and taken back to the orphanage, it didn't work out. And the last family took me out, they named me John Edward. I went in at three months of age to the orphanage as Stephen Douglas. I came out as William, I went back in, I came out as Billy, I went back in, I came out as John Jolliffe, and I stayed. This goes back to my, if you remind me, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. stop here in this, but remind me about love, mm -hmm. okay? Love is on my yeah. list. Okay, love is on my list. Love is on my lips. Okay. So, I didn't know until some time later when I did a birth search, I didn't know there was such a thing as illegitimate human beings. In America, mm -hmm. on the books, mm -hmm. there was such a thing classified as, as illegitimate. Huh? Classified as. Yeah. Documented Illegitimate as. human beings. Mm -hmm. Illegitimate children become mm -hmm. illegitimate uh, adults mm -hmm. who are illegitimate human beings. Now, it changed in America in 1970. There was no more a category of illegitimate mm -hmm. human mm -hmm. beings. Mm -hmm. It changed in Ireland and Scotland in 1986 and 2015 in France. Hmm. An illegitimate human being could not inherit, couldn't get loans, uh, couldn't be baptized, there's a lot of things an illegitimate human being can't. I'm not talking about an illegal alien, no, 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 which no, are legitimate it. human beings. Yeah. I'm talking about an illegitimate human being. Like right. if you were given up for adoption or your, something tragic happened to your parents and there was no other loved ones and you were suddenly a you know a kid in a foster care facility. Well, my biological were parents weren't married. Yeah, They got married. Uh, they, they got pregnant. Mm -hmm. My biological father abandoned my mother and me. Mm -hmm. And my mother couldn't keep me, and so she gave me up. But the point was, they weren't married. And yeah. so in America, during those per Got this it. period of time, that would make me an illegitimate child. Now, illeg illeg illegitimate children are not allowed to be placed in well-adjusted homes. So if you and your wife mm -hmm. couldn't get pregnant, no fault of your own, mm -hmm. you could not adopt me because I was illegitimate. Fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know any of this until I did my birth search. Yeah, they changed it in the U.S. in 1970. You're right, 1970, okay. 86, et cetera. Yeah. In 2015 in France. Uh -huh. It's nuts. So, um, but in France, they don't ever get married. So everybody's still <laughs> right. <legitimate. laughs> right. I was just thinking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so when I was a child, mm -hmm. I would be teased that I was illegitimate. Yes. Okay. And uh, I figured out somehow, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong, mm -hmm. But I figured out somehow, either with my adoptive family helping me or just on my own, because I've been that kind of thinker all my life, that my biological father has a wife. And he's getting this. He was a major actor in the golden era of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. My mother was an actress. They had a Hollywood romance, got pregnant, and had me. Now, he finds out that this young girl, he gets pregnant, is 18, is pregnant, he leaves her, abandons her, and goes back to his wife. Now, if there's anything illegitimate, it's their relationship. Right. It can't right. be me. What did right. I do? Right. Right? Do you think I have that, that uh, conclusion right? I think you do now. Okay. 
Do you know who I see in my office? People that believe that they're illegitimate? People who have got their story wrong. Got it. I got my story right. Mm -hmm. I'm legitimate. Yeah. Their relationship is illegitimate. Yeah. And that saved me from legitimizing myself at every turn. Mm -hmm. Watches, boats, cars, money, all this stuff. Right. I saved myself all that struggle to legitimize myself because I was legitimate from the beginning. Back to reference points. Mm -hmm. Back to negative, uh, yeah. negative self-confidence. Mm -hmm. If you never invite me back to your podcast, I am not going to say my mother gave up on me. Tom gave up on me. <laughs> exactly. Everything. Of I course. Go to that yeah. Reference point and right. explain everything. Right. And and I'm telling you, people who are listening to this broadcast, mm -hmm. and people you shake hands with and do business with every day. They have reference points they go to to explain and interpret all life events. That's the part I want on Instagram. I'm just letting my team know. This is how I edit, by but the way, live in the yeah, middle of the yeah, show. Yes. <laughs> right. But you see, that's yes. where the negative self-confidence yes. comes from. Where does so, the confidence yeah. of your negativity right. come from? Right. Well, I'm legit illegitimate. Yeah. And they wear like a badge of honor. We all do. I, I, I don't. Or a badge I'm not, of shame. Or a badge of shame. But meaning it's, it's they, they're so committed to it. And that's why when you were saying, talking about like confidence, we've got negative con uh, confidence and we've got positive confidence, yeah. right? Everybody's as confident as everybody else. Right. Everybody's confident. The question is in what? <laughs> in what kind? What kind right. do you have? The negative right. side or the positive kind? So uh, you said something. I actually something. want to go a totally different direction. Oh, you do? Why okay. do you not believe in love? <laughs> You're misrepresenting me. <laughs> I do believe in love. I just don't think it's the big, the big play that everybody makes it. What does that mean? Pop songs, singer songs, poets. Yeah. Everybody is right. just love is musicals. The big, my yeah. sister, who wrote the rose, says love is a razor and makes your heart to bleed. Yeah. So it, this love thing is really misunderstood. And the reason I'm going to, I'm not going to answer it. I'm going to mm -hmm. give you insights. Yes. I believe in Q and I. Yes. Not yes. Q and A. Yes. I don't not believe Q in Q and on for some of the people out there. No, not Q and on. <laughs> I I but believe. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help yeah. it. So I don't believe in answers or yeah. solutions. I believe yeah. in improvements. Right. Improvements. Right. Because if you have an answer, mm -hmm. you cannot improve upon an answer or mm -hmm. solution. Yeah. But you can improve upon an improvement. Yeah. Okay. Back to love. So. In the orphanage and people who adopt children, do they love children? Sure. Sure. That's probably why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. During those years when I'm living at the orphanage and being out and back and back with different names and all this, was I loved? Yeah. Yeah. Did I belong? No. The number one psychological need in mankind is belonging. Being a part, being mm -hmm. a member. Being a member of something bigger than yourself. That's the number one psychological need. And therefore, I think that people who didn't belong invented love. I got to come out of here with something. Right. So I invent love. Yeah. My father doesn't see me. I'm, th I'm making this story up. Yeah, yeah. My father doesn't see me, divorced my mother, divorces me. I get the perfunctory card maybe every five years, and but I never see him. Yeah. But I know in his own way he loves me. I want to say, dude, you didn't fit in his program. Yeah, you don't belong. Any crisis of love is a crisis of belonging. Isn't that interesting? And therefore, that's why divorce is so detrimental to people mm -hmm. because they no longer belong. Right, right. So how do you... So it's not that I don't uh, yeah, no, no, love I love. I know, I know. It's just that, yeah. you know, let's put it. But what do we really, well, we, like so you talk about like human needs. Like what do we really want? We want to be a part of something. Yeah. We want to belong to something. Yeah. We want to be with people that are like us, that we feel safe and comfortable to be vulnerable and to be strong and everything else under I the sun. I flew down from Newport Beach yeah. all the way down here to be on your program. Yes. For how much money? Uh, oh, yeah. That's nothing. right. That's right. It cost what? you. <laughs> it cost what you. was calling me. <laughs> yes. To we be belong. A part, be a part of your life. Right. Be a part of what right. you're doing down here. Yep. I want to be a part of that. Belonging. Isn't that magical? I love you, man. That was awesome. <laughs> so so people want to belong. Yeah. How do we... Uh, how do we, So the person listening to this right now, What what is the I you have for the person that is sitting here listening right now and saying... 
okay, I have disconnected from belonging to a loved one, to my spouse, to, you know, I've, I've isolated myself essentially. How did, how did they begin to, to work themselves back into that state of belonging? I don't feel like we belong together. I don't feel like I belong to you or you belong mm -hmm. to me. I feel alienated. I feel like we've mm -hmm. drifted, we've uncoupled. So the question is, what would have to change? Mm -hmm. What would you need me to do or mm -hmm. be yeah. that I'm not yeah. at this point that would make you feel more that I'm a part of your life or you're a part of my life? Yeah. It's not what you could do. It's what could mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Start with you. Yeah. Let's start with them. Uh, Bill Mitchell, who I, I know I've mentioned to you, uh, one of my great mentors, you know, I've been married 28 years and there was a moment in our relationship, mm -hmm. our marriage when, uh, Kath and I, like right after like the second kid was born, Steve-O and, and you know, you're just, you're in that, like we're in uncharted territory. There was no, there was no, like, how do you do this? No, by the way, I started a new business in the middle of it all. Right. So, mm -hmm. so the belonging sense, right. Like I felt like the children belong to her and they kind of belong to me. And I didn't, yeah. you know, like I was in that state. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking about Bill and, and Bill, who is, you know, a mentor of mine, like, you know, just someone that you know, married for a long time, had a wonderful relationship. Just, I thought like, what are the questions that Bill would be asking himself right now? And, and it, it was never outward. It was always inward. And yeah. I forget like the questions, but it was like, mm -hmm. what am I doing? That's creating the disconnect. <clears throat> that's right. Right. What am I doing? That's creating the disconnect. And then, like, what am I committed to? And then what are the changes I need to make, right? And then how do I want to express that in a way to Kathy in a way that she could hear it, not from a defensive stance, that I was like, I'm doing this because, but instead like, I'm feeling this. And, and, and I remember like sharing it with her and just both of us just being like overwhelmed by just the honesty, the vulnerability of it. And that was the beginning. Like, and, you know, I mean, obviously 28 years of marriage and like, right. you know, you, you swing in and out of like deeper levels of connection. But like, that was a really significant moment that I still go back to. Yep. Now it's in like Evernote. So I've got it always in my notes. Well, one of the questions is, you know, we, we were talking about, mm -hmm. it's always an inside game. But one of the ways of asking yourself a question is to ask other people a question about right. me. Right, right. Where do you see I'm falling short? Yeah. Where, where am I at a distance where have I seemed to put you as less of a priority? Mm -hmm. That's the same question as if I ask it of myself. Right. Many times I can't understand it as clearly right. as you watching and observing and being my partner. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. our partnership and business. Yeah. Where am I falling short of the partnership we want to develop together? Mm -hmm. Where am I falling short? The timing on this is just so perfect, John. I'm about to go lead a two-day workshop and and uh, help people make decisions about what they want to do for 2022 and beyond, and create, wow. you know, hopefully a bigger expression of uh, a north star would be the way I've yeah. described it, like a true north star. Like, and then you then you realize you're gonna have a thousand ups and downs and bumps along the way, but if you actually know where you're going, yeah. right, like that whole thing. Um, but it's really all about personal and professional development. Mm -hmm. The recognition that, you know, there's so much more in you. The way, give me the question again, like, is the life you're living? Is the life you're living the life that wants to live in you? Yeah. Like, that's a great question. It's, you know, it's just, there's, there's a part of us that's bubbling. There's a part of us that's, mm -hmm. you know, pushing and it's urging and all that. But we're mm -hmm. like, no, that's not who we are. We're right. this and we yeah. do that. So there's another saying it's, uh, I think, Buddhist something. And you've heard it many times. Mm -hmm. And every time I hear it, it makes me want to, I don't know. It's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. A journey of a thousand miles mm -hmm. begins with a single step. Mm -hmm. I break out every time I hear that. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Why? It should have been said... A journey of a thousand miles begins with a map. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you get out there and a thousand an, miles and you go, oh. And, a, and an airplane. <laughs> and an airplane. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. A journey of a thousand yeah. miles should begin with a map. And yeah. that's what you're that's providing what, Exactly. People. You're providing exactly. them a map. Yep. You yep. want to get here? Well, yep. the, sh the shortest distance between mm -hmm. two points mm -hmm. Is a straight line. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of us were born with one point to mm -hmm. draw from. Yeah. And how do you know if that's a straight line? Yeah. And it isn't. It's circuitous. Mm -hmm. It's wandering, digressing, yeah. contradicting itself. 
and that's life. Yeah. But we need coaches, we need therapists, and we need counselors mm -hmm. to give us the map. Yeah. And sometimes it. the map is, let's reconclude, mm -hmm. concede, so you can succeed, and find out where your confidence comes from. What kind of confidence do you have? Mm -hmm. And again, are you confident confidence in, could yeah. be one mm -hmm. thing in one area of your life, could be another in another area. Mm -hmm. No one's a success or a failure. Mm -hmm. We're just all trying to get it together. So I ask people whenever I speak, I said, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Now, if they're answering it correctly, they'll say, to find my way home. Why are you here? To find my way home. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you come sooner? That's our story. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's our the, story. That's like the processor. Yeah. So that's our story, why we didn't come sooner. Yeah. Why we didn't call you sooner. Why we didn't get on your program sooner. Yeah. That's our story. This was a, a fun episode, John. This is going to be one of those. You're like, good like, live, man. I, listen, man, I'd look, you're good live. I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm just the, you know, I put the T down and put the ball, hand you the club and bang. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it is every time I'm with you, I'm, I'm infatuated. I'm interested. I'm very mm -hmm. curious, like what's going on inside that head of yours and the way you view the world and the way you're able to frame things. Um, you're I, a great teacher. I have a cork. You do have a cork. <laughs> I got a, I have a decent cork. I like that. I like that <laughs> metaphor. And I was like, when you actually were talking about the bucket, I was actually thinking about um, auditory anchors, mm. you know, like positive bang, positive bang, positive yeah. bang. And then every time she hears bang positive. Right. Um, but no, I like that. You're like, no, it's like, they're all falling out of you. Right. You're not able to let it stick. Well, you clean that up. That's yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah. There was a, there was a lot, uh, there was a lot in there. All right. Well, as we wrap this up, I just want to say to all my friends out there listening, we have to quit. We do. We do. Oh. I have to get ready to go do that event. Oh, yeah. Yes, eventually. Eventually. All right, all right. Uh, is there something else I, that you want to share? There's a oh, thousand sure there more things you want to share. This this know. actually felt like the beginning of a book. I know you're <laughs> right. You, you've been flirting with or you've written yeah, three books. You just haven't published anything yet. Mm. Um, what are you going to talk about tomorrow with everybody? You, you guys all thought I was quitting and now we're going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm lecturing for six hours straight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a good warm up. And I'm going to talk about that digressing, wandering journey called life mm -hmm. and how marriages really uh, expose us. Yeah. You know, none of us are grown up. We're mm -hmm. all growing up. Yeah. You know, and we need a commitment. We need marriage. We need children. You think you're patient? Have children. Hmm. You know, y you think you're loving and tolerant and all that? Get married. Mm-hmm. Because that commitment, <laughs> if it's just girlfriend and boyfriend, we would just abandon all this growth. Right. But because we're committed, we have an estate and it's complicated and all mm -hmm. that, we stick with it. Mm -hmm. If we can get the help, if we can get the coaches, right. if we can get the counselors in there as a team, part of the team. So I'm talking about growing up and not just growing old. And we're going to talk about a lot of self-assessment. And I'm sure there's... A lot of things I'm forgetting to tell you that we're going to be well, doing it's a in six, six hours. hours. Six hour speech. And you covered a lot of ground today. So yeah. good. I, well, I'm sorry I can't be there with you tomorrow because mm. I'll be doing my own six hour version of something, something. Yeah. But, but I will see you again soon. Thank you. Um, I, Thank you for having me. Yeah. I, everybody should just Google him once and just like take, take a peek. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm razzing him on like he needs to get on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. But like he's there. He's there. But we're, I got to get his people. Right. Brian, we need to get his people on this stuff. Mm -hmm. So my friend, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you I appreciate it. All right. We're out guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.